Good morning and welcome back to the channel where we learn, do, and talk about landscape photography until we're sick of it. When I think about the landscapes of cypress swamps, I tend to think of the American Southeast, the Everglades, Florida, South Carolina, Alabama, lush landscapes that uh, sort of take me back to the primordial incipient stages of creation. Wet sunbeams beaming down through the trees and uh, thick fogs rising up from the surface of the water in those hot, humid southeast climates. This cypress swamp is in Indiana. So this is a landscape that's really captured my fascination over the last few years. I think I started coming here at the end of 2019, the winter of 2019, uh, going into 2020. And uh, it was a location that I, I knew I just had to check out when I found out that at one point, this was thought to be the uh, most northerly cypress swamp in the world. It's actually in my home county of uh, Knox County, Indiana. So I won't say the exact location of this swamp. Suffice it to say, it's very secluded, very, uh, uh, very far off the beaten path and very difficult to get to by any vehicle, but let alone the, uh, the station wagon <laughs> that I used to bring to this location. But that seclusion is one of the more valuable differentiating features uh, for me as a photographer between this swamp and, um, and other more northerly swamps that have in fact been discovered since this was thought to be the northernmost. Many of those have been turned into uh, parks, have been integrated into forests and other public areas. The swamp is carved out of uh, a small area of two cornfields. I would have to imagine perhaps even for the purpose of preserving the uh, cypress swamps because cypress are a protected species in Indiana. So I didn't make a YouTube video on those earlier expeditions of the swamp. Um, and I'm gonna try to rectify that today uh, to introduce this location to you, not to, to try to entice you to come here, um, but to hopefully inspire you with the idea that there are all kinds of cool little things to discover in the area where you live where you might want to get out on a fine morning where the light is fantastic and make some photographs for yourself. I did, however, make a blog post on that day, and um, there's some cool information about it, including journal articles from uh, the early stages of the discovery of this swamp. Uh, I'll link to that down in the video description, and I also made this image um, that was the, uh, the product of that, uh, that earlier expedition in 2020. I called that photo Legends, and uh, you, can see, you can see this photo and read more about the location in the blog post. So I'm actually just parked here on my first composition, waiting for the light to uh, come a little more strongly into this area. Slight diffusion from the clouds today, which is nice. Uh, even very overcast lighting, uh, which is the condition that I had in the photograph that I showed earlier, suits this location really well, especially because the water is shallow and still and the reflections are really strong. Now, speaking of that, I've started out here on the edge, uh, the very edge of the swamp. And this, this composition that I'm working on now is actually not the, the composition that I'm uh, most excited about. I'll work on that later, but in order to do that, I'll have to get into the water more and cause more disturbances. So I'm sort of starting on the edge and working my way in before I get the waters all stirred up and muddy and murky from my activity out in there. So um, this, this uh, composition is something that shows off the landscape very broadly. Probably um, something that I'll have in mind for my Knox County calendar that I'll publish later this year. So, yeah, so I'm out here at, uh, at 16 millimeters, um, framed up uh, left tree to tree with, um, you can't see this because of the 16 by nine crop, but I just framed it in so that the bottom of this, uh, this plant isn't cut off and I actually would have preferred to frame it a little higher so maybe I could have used a couple extra millimeters of focal length on this shot but um but I think I can work with what I've got and I'm actually just now waiting for the light to filter into a few of these locations the, the, the light is coming in from behind so I can't really see features of light I can see the effect of the light in the backlight that it's giving uh, to the plants that are coming up out of the water for uh, eight tenths of a second at F14 and ISO 100. So uh, it is darker here than it looks probably on the video presentation and uh, very worthwhile to drag the tripod into these locations. Okay, with that in the bag now, I'm going to go ahead and work uh, into the swamp and some of the more intimate uh, 
compositions that I have in mind that feature more of the light and more of the details of the scene. And I'll take you with me. So now I'm moving a little more into things that I'm actually interested in shooting. Not just trying to give the story of the location, but uh, I don't know, little glimpses of uh, vignettes and details and, and things that capture uh, more of what interests me, which is the light, the shapes of the landscape. Uh, uh, things that maybe only interest me, but things that if I don't capture, I would, I would certainly be uh, remiss and regretful if I left without. So uh, while I'm waiting for the light here to walk you through the shot, I'll give you a quick tip uh, which regards uh, using the tripod in the water. Because uh, normally the conventional wisdom is that you want to, when you're uh, extending and, and, and contracting the legs of the tripod, to level it or to achieve the right position. Generally you want to have the, uh, the thicker section out first and then and then only use the thinner sections at the bottom when you, if you need it uh, for additional height because the thicker sections offer the, uh, more, the most stability. But when you're working in the water, I find it's actually a lot smarter to extend the bottom sections first and that way you don't get, um, especially this murky, muddy water that's full of mud and sediments, you don't get that up into the joint of the tripod because it's like impossible to get uh, dirt that dries uh, up in the joint out of the joint. So, so extending the bottom sections of the tripod legs first and uh, keeping those joints up out of the water, pro tip, absolute pro tip for your wet landscape photography. Okay, so here's the shot, and um, you'll see why I'm waiting on the light, because when the light comes out and hits the top of the, these are called cypress knees, right? These are essentially a part of the uh, root of the plant uh, when these cypress trees grow in wet areas that come up out of the water to, I don't know, to let the plant breathe or, um, or, or uh, uh, get nutrients, I'm not sure. Um, but they're super, super cool and pretty. And when the light comes in here and it hits the tops of these cypress knees, uh, they really light off. You can see that they're a, uh, they're a bare, right? They don't have a bark on them like the, uh, the base of the uh, cypress knee. And they're also a slightly more reddish color. So they're really striking when the, the light comes out and just uh, kisses the tops of those, which is really nice. And then, uh, you know, uh, our regular view to the cypress trees in the background, tree to tree composition, right? Uh, tr uh, composition framed in so you get the edge of the left tree and I've gone a little bit wider so that we don't cut off this plant here and then uh, d just done the same thing on the right side. So uh, what's happening in the background is really kind of conventional, but I really like the tr uh, triangular arrangement and slightly off center arrangement. It's like, it's still, it's, it's not centered, but it still feels uh, very balanced and harmonious to me. So I just like the way that that's um, arranged uh, here with the three large cypress knees in the foreground. And then, uh, of course, uh, got to be a little playful with the reflection as well, because when I shoot here, I like to do as much as I can to maintain the specimen of the cypress tree um, in the foreground. So we've got no interruption here with um, this reflection, with this reflection, and then um, also no interruption between the, uh, the foliage growing up from the cypress knees. So a uh, pretty simple shot, pretty straightforward shot, lots of storytelling elements. And uh, uh, one challenge that I will point out is because this tract of land is so thin, um, I always struggle shooting here with light coming in from the background. And um, I found that it's just part of the location and uh, I've got to take it the way it is. So normally something that I would try to frame the photograph around to, to work those bright, uh, really blaring bright areas out of the forest, but it's, it's kind of part of the, the story of this uh, place. So. so I'm just leaving it in and I'll let it go probably to pure white and um, just, just starting to get a little light now. You can see kissing the top of this plant and should have that here on the cypress knees really soon.
I'll show you the image now, and then I've kind of got the idea that maybe I'll just chase these cypress knees around the swamp, uh, chase the light around the swamp and see what it's illuminating, especially with this, these uh, cypress knees because it's about, it's about nine in the morning and the, uh, the sun is just now at the height where it's being filtered by the canopy and it looks really, really nice here as it comes down onto the floor of the swamp. So um, I'll show you the photo now and then we'll, we'll chase around some other compositions. Okay, here's another good example of the, the sunlight just kissing the top of this cypress knee. So I've, I've actually framed this one up so that it does reside in the uh, reflection of the tree. So the bright parts of the image are uh, to the sides here, uh, framed in by these two other trees. And up here, um, up here behind the tree. So um, the, the dark tones are sort of defined by the cypress tree and its knee. Uh, resting there in its reflection. So I like that. And then um, for some other elements of decoration, I'll talk a little bit more about um, some of these other trees here in a second. But um, yeah, I, I like this. Uh, uh, I don't know this. Maybe I'll actually take this a little bit more off center too, so that I get a little more uh, symmetry with these two trees here on the side. Um, and yeah, that's the whole story. I raised, I, I raised uh, the center column here really high, as you can see. Um, so that I didn't have to fuss too much with the legs so that I could get the uh, cypress knee here below the base of the tree. So I had that for six tenths of a second. And what I wanted to say about these, uh, these other trees is that um, one of the cool things about coming to these Midwest cypress swamps, which you can find a few probably um, uh, within at most a couple of hours from where you live, is that uh, it's, it's, it's interesting to see the cypress trees um, reside with these other hardwood trees. That's really unusual. And, uh, and uh, uh, if you can visit these areas in the autumn uh, where you have, um, where you have all kinds of leaves on the ground, right? It's, it's, it's unusual and unique to see uh, the cypress, uh, a cypress swamp in that condition and um, sort of plays against the, the type and the conventions of the cypress swamp photography genre. So uh, be sure you take advantage of those opportunities that you as Midwesterners have that Southerners would probably be jealous of. Okay, before I get into this last photo, I wanna thank you for bearing through this entire video, which was shot on my GoPro. I hate to do that to you, but there's a reason why I had to make this video on the GoPro, and you'll learn about that later on the channel, so I do encourage you to subscribe for that. To see the conclusion of the uh, video series that I'm making about my uh, first gallery exhibit where I want to give you some really uh, detailed and hopefully useful and transparent information about how much money I made uh, selling landscape uh, photography in a art gallery and also I want to show you some of the projects that I've been able to fund uh, through the sales of the photos and um, Oh, I've also been working on a, a firefly photography video, so that's always a big focus of mine in the, in the early to mid-summer is uh, photographing fireflies, and uh, I've never been able to make a great YouTube video about it, so I've been working really hard at that and uh, uh, composing photos and making videos over the course of almost a month now, so I think that'll be a really cool cool video that um, you can look forward to seeing in the next few weeks. So I do encourage you to subscribe to my channel. 
If you'd enjoyed this conversation, don't forget that I've got a patronage site at buymeacoffee.com slash Matt Ramsey, where you can make a donation to continue to fund my uh, inspirational uh, photo positive activities. And uh, you can also check out uh, two galleries that are showing at my website, mattramsey.gallery, if you'd like to order a print. Okay, so for this last photo, I've wanted to get in and uh, make something that puts the trees into this sort of uh, conversation, this uh, interrupting conversation where if you see we have a, a staggered uh, tree here and then here and here and let, to be honest I may crop into this I'm not sure but uh, and then this uh, this pattern continues going all the way back so it's just trees all the way through and what I really wanted to have as little else in the photo uh, as possible as trees so um, we'll see how this works. Uh, it would have been maybe better uh, in this instance to have a longer focal length lens, but um, what I am liking is the sun is just now coming in and giving a really cool reflection here. Okay, so anyway, this photo is just something that I wanted to have for myself, maybe as a learning experience, maybe just as a keepsake for my memories. It is the last photo that I'm going to take from this location, and I'm going to capture it and show it to you right now. Okay, so I did capture that at two focal points, one for this tree. I don't know if you can see this, but this is a, 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 a tiny little cypress branch that's broken off that still has some of the leaves hanging on it. So I, I really like that as a foreground element. And of course, this, um, this really bright, hot reflection here. Um, so I captured a focal point here and a focal point here on this mid-ground tree as well. And I took uh, exposures of both at six tenths of a second. In the foreground here, I also made a, a safety exposure at one tenth of a second, just to, just in case this is a little too hot for um, to pull any detail out of the surface of the water there, because I don't want to take a risk of losing any of those cool details on the water surface. Okay, that's a wrap for the Cypress Swamp today. I want to thank you for coming along with me. Uh, hopefully, I've given you some inspiration and some ideas of uh, unique, interesting things that may be around you like this cypress swamp or a cypress swamp that you have access to or something crazy that you didn't know existed right in your backyard to get out and make some photographs of. Okay, I think I'm going to go dry out my shoes. So uh, thank you so much for subscribing. Until I see you next time, you guys keep an eye out and a foot forward. Thank you for watching.